conservative. Christian. Mother. Wife. Air Force veteran. Gun rights advocate. This is Stacy on the Right. Here's your host, Stacy Washington. Welcoming in to Stacy on the Right, founder and renowned speaker, political commentator, internationally successful business owner. He's the founder of CraigHuey.com. His books are The Christian Voter, How to Vote For, Not Against Your Values to Transform Culture and Politics, and The Great Deception, Ten Shocking Dangers, and The Blueprint for Rescuing the American Dream. Craig, thanks for coming on. Hey, Stacey. It's great to be back with you. I'm glad you're here. I I have uh, many, many questions. I saw the stories about Google's election interference, and I unfortunately, I did not think, oh, no, that's new. I thought, oh, of course they've been doing that. We've been hearing about it. But there's new information. Uh, Talk to us about what you found. Well, you know, Google has this uh, its kind of a delusion, like a great deception of objectivity. And just like you mentioned, uh, you're not surprised by the new findings. But the new findings uh, really point to the issue of election interference and because it's it's such a great um, bias. And, and censorship. So it's bias and censorship with Google. And the Media Research Center uh, took what many people know from observation. And then, Stacy, what they did is they documented it so that from 2008 to 2023, the documentation shows the bias. Now, anybody who's listening can go right now and what they'll do is they can type into Google, which is close to 95% of all the searches go through Google right now, though, though it's declining. What they can do is they can type in Trump and abortion, or they can type in Trump on Israel, or they could type in Trump on student loan forgiveness. And what are they going to see? They're going to see CNN and NPR. They're going to see New York Times, Washington Post. They're going to see the liberal media, and they're never going to see unless they go to – if they're lucky, they go way down, maybe 15, 20 pages, which nobody ever does. They may find then uh, Epoch Times or National Review um, or Newsmax, something with a different point of view. And that is wrong. And so what has happened in the past is that the swing voters, if they're they're interested in a particular issue, if they're interested in a particular candidate, then they're going to get a completely censored and biased Google search algorithm designed to be able to really influence thinking and to censor any alternative thought. So the censorship that you're talking about actually goes right to the heart of what Americans expect when they go online. They think they're yeah. getting unbiased information. They think they're, you know, oh, I'm looking at whatever. You know, they, they think they're looking at something that uh, reflects maybe their viewpoint or um, is just a simple search. They, they truly believe I searched for, you know, whatever it is, and this is showing me whatever it is, and it's going to show me you know, millions of options. I won't look at all of them, but even if you scroll through the first four pages, you're not going to get the full scope and totality of what you're discussing until you kind of think it through in the way that you just discussed. You have to say, well, what what am I interested in seeing? And you have to go beyond whatever it shows you. When, what I usually do is I just, I look on the first page sometimes, and, mm-hmm. and this is a time-constrained type of an issue. If I If I have right. time, I go further. But most Americans don't really have time, and they don't feel like going further. No. So it, it, you're estimating uh, uh, 10, 15, 20 million people, uh, voters, uh, who, who are low-information voters that are passionate about a certain issue. Or, you know, in, in the, the last Democratic primary, uh, if you were interested, let's say, in the Democratic primary and you, you typed in Democratic presidential candidates, You'd see Biden, you'd see uh, Miriam Williamson, but you would never see Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, you wouldn't ever see criticism of, of Biden. 
if you typed in the Republican presidential uh, uh, campaigns uh, when DeSantis and the others were running uh, against Trump, uh, you know what comes up? What came up at that point? You'd have uh, two hits. Williamson, Miriam Williamson would come up under the Republican presidential campaign, and Will Hurd, the congressman who had less than one percent. You couldn't really find anything else because of the way the algorithms were. And and sadly, you know, this is with a Google search, and you you you, you never know. You, you you have no clue that you're not getting the full story and all the truth. You think you're getting an objective search. So if Americans are interested in finding the actual information, because I've, I've, you know, we, we have talked about this before, um, but it bears repeating. You really have to use, first of all, you maybe aren't using the Google search engine. That's the first thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, you, you, you know, the, 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 it is really a major problem because, and it gets very, very complex because you're dealing with Google. You know, I, I, uh, I have an ad agency and Stacy, I probably spend close to um, a, maybe a, a million dollars a year on Google ads for my clients and I know Google very well. It's good and it's bad and it's ugly. And I, I've dealt with them for many years. And because I have uh, a, a political co uh, podcast and newsletter, I have seen Google take my content and vanish it from Google searches. Uh, they, they have YouTube. And, and Stacey, the, whether you're conservative, a uh, Republican, Libertarian, a Christian, you're going to be marginalized on Google's YouTube. And, and, and they have Gmail. Um, subscribers to my newsletter with Gmail, very few ever get it if they give me their Gmail uh, email address because Google tries to suppress. And so it is a problem. And until there's competition – from somebody who can give more objective information, we do have a major problem here in America for this upcoming election. Now, the good thing is that Google, the Google empire is kind of crumbling, and whether it will crumble, who knows. But AI and, and their Gemini project of AI has, has been so embarrassing and so prejudiced, and people have seen through it. They've had to pull it off. And what's happening is uh, Microsoft and, and ChatGPT, that now is starting to get so many people using those searches, they're moving away from Google. If we can get competition going, maybe we can start seeing some changes, but it's not going to help in the 2024 election. The only way we can shine light on that is with uh, Congress and Mike Johnson having you know a – a spotlight on what they're doing and an expose of that and put pressure on them to stop doing what they're doing. Yeah. When you talk about the newsletter, so the only way around that is if the person who's subscribing to your newsletter, they're not using a Gmail account. That's correct. It, 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 it used to be I had no problem. And then all of a sudden I was noticing I get people saying, why did you take me off your list? How come I'm not getting the newsletter anymore? And, and uh, all of a sudden, this big decline in open rates and click-through rates. I'm thinking, what did I say? And it wasn't me. Uh, we discovered it was Google uh, with its Gmail that, that, that basically uh, was doing the, uh, the censoring because their algorithms picked up something in my newsletter that people were getting and they did not like it. So to be clear here, we're talking about, because we know that Gmail reads all of the emails, right? We know that it does yeah. that so that it can pitch ads to us. Um, we're aware mm -hmm. of that. So it's not like we're, you know, we're going in blind. Gmail is free. So because it's free, whenever something is free, what we've learned is that means you're the, you're the product, you're what's being sold. You're, 
purchase habits, all kinds of different things. They're monetizing that. So knowing that that's the truth, right? We go in with our eyes wide open. We're using the free Gmail service, but it's, it's one thing to say you're the product. It's, it's one thing to say, you know, <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, um, you know, utilize your search or what have you. We're going to sell your information to advertisers. That That's one thing. It's totally another thing for them to say, hmm, so we skimmed the content of your favorite newsletter and we find it to be not politically correct. Not it's objectionable to us. We, we don't like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to prevent you from seeing it. That's a totally another thing, right? Oh, it, it, it's, it's terrible. In fact, the, uh, it was only um, maybe two years ago, I believe it was, uh, the Republican National Committee tried to uh, do a, a, some type of a lawsuit against uh, oh, Gmail. Yeah. I remember, yes. Their, mm -hmm. their fundraising letters all disappeared. Nobody got them. And the same thing for candidate mailing. If you're a conservative candidate running for office, they're biased. All of a sudden, you know, people who were on the left, the radical left and pro-socialist, and, and they, they're running they, their Gmail account. Somehow everything gets through. But the conservative candidate, when they're doing uh, fundraising or, or prospecting or, you know, whatever, the Gmail is, is, is marginalizing or censoring them. So the real answer here, and I hate to say this because, man, do I like my Gmail, right? It's seamless. You get mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. Google Docs, right? I mean, let's face it. Unless you're a barbarian, <laughs> these, these, these products work. <laughs> they're, they're fantastic. Um, but as usual, they're not the only game in town. Microsoft has right. um, an email thing that, you know, they don't, they don't censor what opens and what doesn't open. Um, they have a free account. They also have you know, what you can pay for. They have yep. document sharing. They, so the technology that we have gotten so hooked on with Google, it's not that it doesn't exist within another company for us to use. It's that we're used to using the Gmail. And, you know, people usually stick with what they're used to. But in the face of censorship, I don't know. Should should people be switching? That That's a question. Yeah, I think the answer is it's in their self-interest not to have some type of censorship that they don't even see, they don't even know is happening, but it happens. Uh, uh, anything you can do to make sure that uh, what, you're get, what you want to get, you get. The searches that you make are objective. The, uh, the videos that you're seeing are, are something where if you're doing any type of research, if you're looking for different points of view, if you're looking for something that, that is of your interest, you know you're getting an objective analysis and, and, and serving of the right videos and not based upon uh, a radical uh, programmer who created a program that basically wants everybody to think like they think. Yeah, and if you don't think that way on your own, they're like, well, let us help you. <laughs> we'll help you yeah. think that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll cut yeah. off your favorite e newsletters. We'll change your search uh, uh, results, and then you will think like us. How about that? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's scary. It, it's really Orwellian. It's not right. And, and, and when, when, when you add up, when you add up the uh, uh, conservatives and the Republicans and the Christians and the libertarians, that's a huge part of Google's business. Their revenue model is built upon the very audience that they're trying to uh, suppress information with and be able to interfere with the elections. And, uh, and yet people just ignore it and they just go on and continue with what they're doing. So if, if Google starts seeing financial setbacks, they may never change, but they might. Uh, 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 and, and at the same time, uh, uh, a business uh, competitor, if they start getting new people who are weighing objectivity and that's why they're moving to them, you're going to see uh, uh, you know, competitive pressures from the free market trying to force a change that we badly need. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. The, the most interesting part of this story is that Google works against 
their own best customers, right? And I know so yeah. many people, every person I know, um, all of my conservative friends have a Gmail account, right? right? It may not be their only account. They might have, most people have more than one email account. I mean, I, I have friends who still have their old AOL. I, I don't know how those are still <laughs> working. Like, how is that still working? But, yeah. <laughs> you know, they still have those. Um, right. I even saw someone the other day with, we used to have something called SBC Global. Um, mm -hmm. That was Southwestern Bell or Southern Bell Corporation. It was It was the phone company. And they had an email that you could sign up for when you uh, signed up for your phone service. And for the longest right. time, everyone I knew still had one of those email addresses. And a friend of mine, <laughs> I was actually running for school board, this true story. And she was like a media mogul, but in her past life, when I met her, she was, you know, stay at home mom like me. And I was running for school board and she, and she saw my, uh, my email account. She said, what's this? what's this address? And I was like, well, um, you know, it's just the email account I set up when we moved here and I, I wasn't sure what to call my, e she said, your email is your first name, last name, and it needs to be a Gmail account. And I said, why? And she said, because Gmail is the serious email account for, you know, for people who are serious, you want people to take you seriously. And so I opened up a Gmail account and had, and it was, you know, my first name, last name, and I had started having people email me there and I didn't think anything else of it. And of course this was back when, most of my friends, closest friends we had, kids, I would babysit their kids. They would babysit ours. We spent lots of time mm -hmm. together working on projects. These people were our, you know, kind of network of most important people. And right. many of them were Democrats, and it never came up. It was not a source of contention. We didn't talk about who was voting for what. We talked about who was volunteering for the third grade mom social who had time to pick sure. up this one's kid, you know, that kind of stuff. So before all right. of this horrible politicization, um, we all had Gmail accounts because we had just started out and we didn't worry about the politics of the people that we were, you know, doing whatever with. We just, we were regular back then, the good old days. Yeah, it, it really did change. It, quite frankly, uh, uh, the change began around 2008, uh, 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 President, uh, uh, Obama used uh, Google uh, and the other platforms to help him win the election and uh, did so while the Republicans were completely asleep. And then when he got worried after 2010 and the Republicans were doing well, he was worried about his 2012 election. So he brought in the very best minds and brains uh, from Google and YouTube and the other uh, platforms to create the most powerful marketing machine based upon social media that ever existed, and and, uh, and Romney didn't know what hit him, and and, uh, and uh, again the Republicans were asleep, and and but it was 2016 when everyone was caught by surprise because Donald Trump won the election, and the anger and the disgust and the and the and people just crying and so upset. Mm -hmm. And in Google, that was when they said, we'll never let this happen again. Yeah, but they're not supposed to be able to say, we'll never let. <laughs> it's an election. Um, it, their policies had yeah. consequences. Their, their statements that Hillary Clinton made, if you remember, she called half the country deplorables. She said things yes. about Americans that kind of precluded her from winning. I think yep. there were people who would have voted for her to be the first female president, but when they heard basket of deplorables, they decided to vote for the other guy. So the reason yeah. everyone wants to blame Mark Zuckerberg for, you know, his inaction and blah, blah, blah. They, they, they so thoroughly um, castigated him in the media and made him out to be the boogeyman. But the fact is it was really a terrible candidate that they ran because they were looking right. for a demographic candidate as opposed to someone that yeah. people really resonated with that. That's, that's the true story of how that election was lost. Yeah, and uh, but it sparked Google to tighten up its policies. I saw it with ads uh, when I was running digital ads and YouTube ads for different conservatives and conservative candidates. All of a sudden, I kept getting denied. No, you can't do this. I was told that I couldn't go ahead and, and do these type of campaigns, and they kept disallowing them. And it really is, you know, all the things we talked about is a form of election interference. And in a sense, 
for the favored uh, candidates. Uh, it is a form of a donation, in my opinion. It's like compensation that's not recorded by the Federal Election Commission. It, it, it's a compensation that's not ever recorded by anyone, and yet it is really uh, an incredible amount of money that would have had it been spent by the radical left to be able to achieve what it's achieved uh, if it had not been, you know, Google giving it for free. Yeah, I, I do think that it should be an in-kind donation. They accuse yeah. Facebook of helping Trump, but the fact is Facebook's been helping the Democrats. Um, Facebook, yeah. the, Trump's team actually just knew how to use Facebook. They um, they posted with the right frequency, and that's how they were able to grow their accounts. But it was it was oh, more than that. that. It was yeah. a movement, right? It was it was people yes. glomming onto the campaign because they liked the message. Um, yeah, and and but back in 2016, the genius in the digital marketing of Donald Trump was able to not have the censorship you have today. Today, what he did is impossible for a Republican or a conservative, a Christian or a Libertarian to do. They won't allow it. So the answer for all of us, because we here at Stacy on the Right, as you know, as you've been on with us before, and we're really grateful for your time tonight and, and your expertise. Mm -hmm. We like to offer a solution. And, you know, if we if we have to cover a dastardly problem, um, the kind of thing that might keep you up at night. We like to have a solution that goes along with it so people can think, okay, you know, I have on my to-do list, I'm going to open up an alternative email account and, you know, something that they promise not to sell my data, they promise not to, you know, mm -hmm. make decisions about what I can open or whatever the, the, the criteria is because a lot of people have different needs when it comes to email. So we need to, you know, be perfectly clear. Not everyone will have a problem with um, everything that we're outlining tonight. I mean, I'm, I'm imagining that you, you do have a problem with someone deciding for you which emails you get to actually receive in your email box, but, you know, to each their own. So what you're suggesting tonight is in order to push back on Google's election interference, Americans should have a G, your, your Gmail account just is, it can't be your primary account. Not for anything no, that you're getting No, I, I, I would drop my Gmail account, transition to uh, one or more other accounts. I would also go, you know, if you've got an iPhone, pick it up right now, uh, take it off Google as a search. Maybe put uh, uh, one of the other ones on there. They're not going to be much more perfect, but they won't be quite as, as bad as Google is. And uh, and you could do a test, uh, you, uh, you know, test uh, what – uh, what what different ones are, are serving to you? Um, you could you know uh, like I said, many people are transitioning to Chat GPT because uh, it's so much easier uh, to work on a search and and so uh, traditional search uh, like like Google does now, uh, they know it that that that's going to be uh, something that only a minority of people are going to be doing. The majority are are going to be using other ways of searches. AI technology keeps improving. And then I, I, I would encourage uh, everyone who is a listener to have influence with their congressperson to be able to say, hey, we want to have uh, a, a committee hearing that Mike Johnson puts into play that will spotlight and document this discrimination and these problems and put the spotlight on it so everybody can see what the truth is. And, uh, and you know, it may not change Google right now, but it will uh, enable people to have a better understanding what the reality is that we're facing today. Better understanding and uh, actually utilizing the choice that is, is our right. It's our right to uh, choose a, an email account that is not engaging in censorship. And so it, it's it's a matter of, and th this is the hard part, right? I'm, I'm acknowledging mm -hmm. the hard part for everybody. It's a matter of saying, okay, I'm putting this on my list for this week. I'm going to get this done. I need to get it done because I, you know, I want to I want to know that if I'm on an email newsletter list, I'm getting the newsletter. Um, this is the world we're living in now, and we don't like it. This isn't what we chose, but 
in every case, even when they're trying to choose for us, there's always an alternative. And as long as we still have that, right, as long as we still have options, we should utilize them. A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, it's there's always something, right? <laughs> it's always some new thing. <laughs> oh, you know, this is the problem. And then we need to do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, geez, you know, something else I have to do. Yeah. Changing it email is not easy. Yeah. Yeah, it can be overwhelming. But then again, we've got to remember uh, truth, letting people know the truth, being aware of it ourselves, and let the free market make the changes because the free market will. Uh, but people have to make some hard choices. And I would say to whatever extent you can, Go to the conservative platforms, you know, whether it be X or any of the others, uh, uh, and, and as far as uh, uh, anything to do with Google, and YouTube, and Gmail, and Google News, time to go somewhere else. Yeah, you have options. Um, it can yeah. be a bit frustrating. And so, you know, please don't feel like we're sitting over here going, oh, it's going to be so, so simple and so easy. Maybe it's not going to be simple and easy, but... It will be something that you can look back and say, okay, you know, I did what I could. It isn't and yeah. that that's one of our big issues is we're sitting around kind of going, well, what can I do? It feels like a lot of the stories that we're listening to, the problem is at the federal level, you, you need an election to do something about it. This one's nice and easy. You're opening up another email account and you're making the transition to it. And then you can leave your Gmail account open and have start, start changing your email address with the different places that you get newsletters from, just as a test, just test it out. See if right. newsletters that you've signed up for that you haven't seen in a while, you know, you know how this works. Now that we've talked about it, there'll be people <laughs> who are driving along and they're going, wait a second, I did sign up for, you know, Kari Lake's email list. And I haven't seen an yeah. email from that in I don't know how long. And then what they'll do That's is they'll right. go look in their email box and go, hmm, how could I have missed every single newsletter that she sent out? And before you know it, they'll realize, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a part of what they were discussing. And then that might be your cue to make a change, you know, sign up for her newsletter from an account that um, is not Gmail linked, you know, not a Gmail uh, email address, and then see if you get it. And if you get it, then you know you were a part of what we're discussing tonight, unfortunately. That's right. Uh, it's a simple test. You can pr uh, prove it yourself. You can prove the, the, the bias. Uh, by simply doing any Google searches right now, you can tell uh, uh, with Gmail, get another uh, uh, email uh, provider and uh, see you're going to be getting the things you want, and you'll see that the things with Gmail are disappearing. Hmm. And then once you've done that, you can feel free to uh, shoot, shoot an email over at the contact form over at StacyOnTheRight.com. And um, I'll be right there with you. I'm going to I'm gonna test it out, too. Although I'm not a huge newsletter person. I'm only signed up for a few. But I often, it, it's the same thing for me. I work, and I'm, I'm looking at email for work. And so there will be days that go by before I realize I haven't looked at something recently, and I'll go back through my email and search for it. Um, and so I, I think, you know, for all of us, it's a wake-up call. It's an opportunity to do something about some of all these things that are, you know, currently bothering us. Um, so, yeah, definitely check it out, folks. It's so good to have you here tonight, and I'm so glad that you are bringing these stories to us. And I want to point everybody to your information. You have craighuey.com, craighuey.com. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Stacey, it's been great to be with you. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Talk to you soon. And when you go over to craighuey.com, he has voter guides. He has a presidential poll that's available. These are all clickable, and he also has information there. You can sign up for his newsletter. You can buy his book, one of his books. He has many books, actually. Um, so check him out. It's craighuey.com. And you can talk to me tonight at 866-957-2874, 866-95-PATRIOT. We'll be right back.